Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mesa Troll Tips and Tricks. If this is your first time here, my name is Phil and I teach people how to set up and run a Mazak CNC lathe while programming it with Mesa Troll. If you want to see more of this type of content, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. In this video, I'm going to switch over to the milling side and show you how to program and mill a slot that's wider than the end mill in the face of a bar. I'm going to program it using XY coordinates instead of a radius and an angle. Ultimately, the machine will still run it using polar coordinates because this machine does not have a Y axis. Alright, let's get started. Alright, here's the workpiece we're going to be programming. This is basically a slot in the face of the part. It's 750 thousandths wide and our stock size is 3.25 inches in diameter. And I'm going to use a half inch diameter end mill to create this slot. So the first thing we're going to do is push the left button, go to program, program file, and select a work number that's not listed here. I'm going to choose work number 70 for this example. So go back to program, work number 70, input. If it's a new program, push the program button. Mazatrol or EIA, we're going with Mazatrol. Workpiece material is aluminum. Max outside diameter is 3.25. Inside is zero. Workpiece length is uh, three inches long. And max spindle RPM limit, this is the G50 for the turning side, not the milling side. So it still wants you to put in a value here, so 2000 RPM. Finish allowance on X, finish allowance on Z. These are for the turning side, not the milling. We can leave them blank. And then stock removal of work face, this part is already faced off. So this is going to be zero as well. First thing we're going to do is turn on the coolant. So push the three arrows, M code, coolant on, and down arrow. So now what we need to do is start programming this part. So push the three arrows twice, and that gets us into the milling mode. And what we're going to do is use the milling left button because we're going to climb cut the feature of this part. So push left, face, and we're going to use the one that's not highlighted because this is going to be open geometry. We're going to have the end mill come in and out of the workpiece. We're not plunging into the work. Width of the groove, we're going to cut it with a half inch end mill, so 0.5. Cutting depth, I'm going to go 600 thousandths deep on this example. And the finished surface roughness I'm going to leave zero so it runs to the roughing feed rate. Because I can control the feed rate a little easier than I can using these finish on the milling side. It tends to run them a little too fast for me. Finish allowance on X, this is for the Z dimension. I'm going to leave 10 thousandths on the bottom of the floor. Surface speed for rough cut, we can push auto. And feed rate for roughing radial, this is the milling feed rate going sideways. I'm going to kick that up to 5 thousandths. And feed rate for roughing axis direction, this is the plunge feed rate. Because I'm plunging in air, I'm going to kick this up to 20 thousandths so it plunges quickly and then cuts the part. Uh, roughing tool number, we can push tool data. And I'm going to use the only end mill that's in the part is tool number 10. So go back to program, roughing tool 10, offset 1, finish tool 10, offset 1. So now what we need to do is we're going to mill this shape and we're going to start over here on X positive and Y positive. So this, the machine programs it from the center line of the part. So 
So we're going to do this line here first. So push line. Now this is where we push the XY button down here. If we just start typing, this will be in polar coordinates. But if we highlight this XY button, everything we type in will turn yellow and that will be the XY position. So starting point on X, I want to start over here at X from the center. Uh, again, it's, it's programmed as XY0 is in the center. I want to start over here at two inches away and 375, so half of the width of the groove. So two inches, 0.375. Starting point on Z is zero. This is the face of my workpiece is zero. Final point on X, I'm going to mill a line straight across here, and I'm going to finish at minus two inches. So minus two input, and I'm still going to be at the 375 on the Y. So 0.375 input, down arrow, line. Now I'm going to make a line that drops down this way, still at X minus two inches and Y minus 375. Down arrow, line. So now I'm gonna go back across it to a point over here, two inches positive, and still Y minus 375. So two minus 0.375. And then down arrow, shape end, end. So now we just programmed this part. So right button, figure check. And the display mode is lit up, so it looks at the face and the side of the part. And you can see the direction of the end mill is on the left-hand side when it's cutting the part. So it's not, if we switched it, it would be on the outside for a right hand. Push store. And now we want to run the program check screen. So program check, check continue. And it roughed it and finished it. And what's going to happen is it's going to take this uh, 600 thousandths depth, it's going to take it 590 thousandths in one shot, and then it's going to leave 10 thousandths for the finish tool. But I don't want to run it that way, I want to run it in 200 thousandths steps. And on this older control, it doesn't allow me to step down in the program. That's actually hidden in the tool file screen. So I'll show you that right now. So go pro tool data and then push tool file. Arrow down to the end mill. And then right here on the tool file screen for the end mill, the cutting depth is listed at one inch right now. Because that's how much flute length I have on this end mill. However, if we change it to 200 thousandths, like this, then when we go to run the program, it'll take that slot in three passes plus the finish pass. So let's show you that now. So go program, check, tool path erase, check continue, and then we'll just step it through with check step and it's at 1967. And now it's at 
3934, taking a second pass. And then the third pass is at minus 590. And the fourth pass is at minus 600. So we're done programming it, we're done checking it. Now what we need to do is set the work shift and run this part. All right, the next thing we need to do is set the work shift. And that's close enough for what we're doing. So left button, program, program file. Z offset teach, zero, input, auto, work number, program 70, and again with the rounding error, I taught it at zero and it says minus a tenth. So it's, it's what it is. All right, let's go ahead and run this part. All right, close the door. Auto, going on and auto, cycle start. Getting into the C-axis mode now, bringing up tool 10, homing the C-axis.
and there's our finished part. Got a big slot right in the middle. C-axis feed clamp exceeded means the feed rate when it was doing a 180 move was faster than it was programmed to do so it slowed it down during that 180 motion. Uh, this machine will not mill in one direction all the way across. It will only mill down to X0 and then mill backwards. And there's our workpiece with a slot right down the middle. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and push that subscribe button and click the bell so you won't miss any future videos we have coming out. Thanks for watching.